I will tell you how to get amazing weapons and powerful unlocks early in Dying Light 2, including guaranteed legendary weapons, combo skills and way way more. But let's start with an easy tip. Don't sleep on the fender. Just like in Dying Light 1, fenders can give you some amazing items, so it's totally smart to check them often, especially because their inventory resets a lot too, and different shops will have different items for sale. And sometimes you find an artifact weapon rarity in the shop if you are lucky, so keep an eye out for these fenders. The best time to check on a shop is after you just gained a new level. Whenever you get a combat or parkour point, you gain one bar towards the next level, and then in the moment you let's say hit level 2 early on the shop will also sell level 2 items so high chance that there are some better items for sale than the ones you currently have and the prices aren't really crazy either so totally buy at least one weapon per time you level up so you have a weapon on your current level especially nice because the enemies also level up with you so they become stronger too new is the craft master who is also nice to pay a visit I immediately upgraded the medicine so it takes three seconds to apply it instead of four which is a huge difference you do need to craft the new version though to benefit from this effect and you can find honey which is needed to craft medicine on rooftops for example over here on the map other upgrades that can be nice are for the lock pick so you can skip lower difficulty locks after three upgrades although overall i would just keep the trophies until later on in the game and these trophies can by the way be earned from special infected in the inventory menu you can see which infected drops which trophy so here we see for example that the uncommon trophy is dropped by the howler which you can easily find during night take them out loot them immediately that's like a really smart way to get them also because this will trigger a lot of virals that drop these trophies too. So totally keep an eye out for these enemies and farm these trophies while you can because they will come in handy later on. For example for special mod upgrades. Early on though I would just use these mods to repair the durability on weapons. Weapons can of course break if you use them often. So what you want to do is use these weapons first and then apply a mod to get some durability back. And only totally do this so you're able to use your favorite weapon for longer. Like it's very easy to craft these mods. Maybe the resources are hard to come by in the world. But if you keep an eye on the resource tab at a fender. You can find them there for dirt cheap. So totally buy them every time you check a fender. It's also very easy to get money in Dying Light 2. We'll talk about that. How to get a nice artifact weapon and way way more. Of course if you like the video so far then leaving a like on it would really help me out. And subscribe for way more Dying Light videos like this. And just like the inventory from a shop. Loot also scales to your level. So when you are level 2 you will suddenly see level 2 items everywhere. And I think on level 2 it's smart to already look for some military convoys that are marked with an orange icon on the map the description tells you what type of items are waiting for you there with of course the higher the rarity the more dangerous the enemies in the area will be good to note is that the loot respawns in these locations just like the enemies so you can revisit them after for example leveling up again to get some higher level items. While the region level indicates the max level of the enemies in that area. So I was able to get level 3 loot here while I was beating up level 2 enemies which is kind of nice. And if you by the way already made it to the city center you can very easily travel back to old Villador by just hovering over a fast travel icon like this one and they can still do these military convoys even though you're already of a higher level. Only the loot in the container that you see right here doesn't seem to respawn because the chest was already open I did get artifact gloves there the last time and I also picked up an artifact weapon over here which was really really cool and I think everyone can actually get an artifact weapon here because Dennis went to the same location and also found an artifact weapon lying here he got a hammer instead of an axe and it seems to scale to your current level so unless you want like a really cool weapon early on you can also wait and come back later and likely get an artifact weapon on max level maybe that would be nice so hopefully there's an artifact weapon for you here too otherwise you can get an artifact weapon also via techlandgg.com i will leave a link to it in the video description just create an account on that website link the game to that account so if you're playing on playstation link playstation xbox steam etc and then you should be able to claim this weapon 
which then should appear in your stash. There are currently issues with the service, so it could take some time before the weapon appears. You see footage here from Greenthal, who was kind enough to share it with me. But yeah, that's another way to get a nice artifact blade. A fun fact is that this weapon and likely other weapons you can earn through the sides level up with you. So the damage actually increases over time, making it useful throughout the whole game. Still, you want to do these military convoys as well, and they might be overwhelming at first, but with the right tools you can more easily clear them. Decoys and Molotovs are key here. With the decoys you can lure enemies to one spot, which might already trigger some fire too, and then just follow up with some Molotovs to burn even more infected. Then I just jump down and take out the leftover enemies with a melee weapon, they're all very much weakened. Use the spear in the environment for the armored enemy, which can be tricky without this tactic, and I just dodge around the big guy to easily take it out. And then you can use lockpicks to open all the different stashes. Careful though, Virals will spawn at some point after you loot. Take them out, which also gives you some nice trophies. And then just finish looting the place. You can very easily craft Molotovs and decoys in the crafting menu after certain main story missions. Like the Unruly Brothers and the Arrival, which are both quite early. But totally keep an eye on Defender 2, where they can sell these items and even upgraded versions sometimes as well. One quick way to get money early on is by keeping an eye on these blue loot sources. If they know that there are valuables here, then you want to go there because you can sell them for a lot of old world money. Also smart is to sell your grey weapons for some extra cash as you will likely not use them and it also makes sure that your inventory isn't full when you're about to get some new items. Also keep an eye on if it's smart to explore the locations during night for less enemies or if you can just go there during day. Another amazing spot for money are the GRE facilities marked with a different icon. Here you can also find a ton of items you can sell and even a gear chest in a special contaminated area. Here you have to be fast to pick the lock but then you can get some amazing rewards. But the main reason you want to go to these GRE locations is for the inhibitors. If you just play through the main story you will already find a lot of these boxes. You will still have to be on the lookout though. Sometimes you can easily skip them if you don't pay attention. But also when exploring the open world you get a sound notification and see an icon appear when you're close to one. And during night there are even special boss encounters that aren't too hard to complete. Totally use the spear in the environment for some nice extra damage and they can also get some inhibitors if you are successful. So yeah, totally keep an eye on the icon, make sure you go into these DRE facilities and then you are able to improve your max health and stamina very often. It's smart to focus on stamina first as this will let you swing weapons more often in combat but also let you climb taller buildings and there are even windmills that you cannot unlock if you don't have the right amount of stamina. So I focused on upgrading my stamina to level 3 first and then I spent my first point in health. Upgrading stamina also lets you unlock new parkour moves. Active landing is really key. Hit circle or a different button mentioned on the skill card to break your fall when landing, saving you a lot of health from fall damage. I personally also enjoy the dart and dash upgrade afterwards, so you can just move faster, which helps with chases and just overall movement through the city. Perfect dodge is great during combat, it lets you slow down time when you dodge at the right time, giving an opening to strike and it's really smart to use this against the red blinking attacks from enemies that you cannot block. And unlocking perfect parry is smart too, if you time your block right against regular attacks from human enemies, then you stagger them, which also opens them up for some nice hits or let you jump on an enemy and then you can use an air kick on another target you do need double jump for this too which i overall recommend as well for traveling but yeah it's cool to combine these with some combat skills as well you mostly want to unlock air kick though for the drop kick skill it's not only super satisfying to kick enemies from high roofs, but also really strong to easily skip whole fights and take over outposts. It's totally smart to focus on getting some quick XP, and really an easy way to get XP is by just doing all the random encounters you come across. So the blue markers that often pop up. During day, it's mostly a human enemy that you have to chase. I had some luck in this case, although mostly they are smarter than this. Sometimes you are fast enough and can just hit them and kill them before they can get away bam the xp is coming in 
But you can also use a throwing knife to easily close the distance against these targets and take them out that way. Other random encounters include saving someone in a cage or just taking out a few enemies. Even if you're just mainlining the game, I still think it's smart to do a quick detour when these objectives pop up because they can also give you some nice loot for the very small effort. During my stream, I got a lot of questions about the bow, which I really liked using in Dying Light 1, but it is a main story unlock in Dying Light 2. After chasing a sniper, I won't spoil much more. And I think they will unlock then at Fenders as well. Still need to use it more though to see if it's really good here. And the glider is also a main mission unlock after reaching the city center. So just play through the main mission to eventually get it. And subscribe for way more Dying Light 2 videos. We got way more tips and videos planned. Of course, if you found something cool, then totally reach out via the input at drafter.com email address. If I use your info, I will totally shout you out. A like on the video would really help me out. And check out my other Dying Light 2 contents by clicking on the screen. For now, I will speak to you in the next one. Enjoy the game. Goodbye.